So in this video, we'll be looking at the example of a spaceship orbiting Mars. And so in it, we're told that the spaceship has a mass of 4,000 kilograms. It's orbiting 1 million meters above the surface of Mars. So I'm gonna underline that, even though it's already underlined, that this is from the surface to the spaceship. And then finally, we are told that the spaceship experiences a force of 8,885 newtons. What we're not told is what that force is. And so the spaceship is not in contact with Mars at all. So this is ha happening over a distance. So we can deduce that this is probably the gravitational force between Mars and the spaceship. So the first thing we want to do is just draw a, a picture of the situation and label what we're given and what we don't know. So the first thing we want to do is we'll label the mass of the spaceship. I'll call that M sub S and that's equal to 4,000 kilograms. I'll call the mass of Mars M sub Mars. And we'll put a question mark because we're not told any information about that. We are told that the distance from the surface of Mars to the spaceship is 1 million meters. So we'll draw a line from the surface of Mars to the spaceship. And that's equal, I'll call that D. D is equal to 1 times 10 to the 6th meters. We're not told any information about what the distance is from the center of Mars to the surface or the radius of Mars. And I'll just call that R Mars. And we'll put a question mark on that. The other piece of information that we're told is that the gravitational force is equal to 8,885 8, newtons. And so that force is going to be pointing inwards towards Mars. So Mars is wanting to pull in that spaceship, and that's what's keeping that spaceship in this orbit. And so we'll label that F sub G, and that's equal to 8,885 newtons. So we've got everything labeled, we can move on to the next step. And what this step is, is we're basically just gonna be taking a snapshot of this region here, and we're gonna be drawing a free body diagram for the spaceship. So I'll put my dot here to represent the spaceship. The first thing we do is we draw our diagram, our coordinate system, and so we'll label the radial or centripetal direction as towards the center of this circle circular path so that's going to be pointing inwards and i'm going to call that the positive r direction and then we need to label the t direction the t direction is the direction of the velocity but we also know that the t direction must be perpendicular to the R direction at any given point. So these need to be, the T direction needs to be at a right angle to the R direction. So we'll draw that going out. And that I'm going to call is the positive T direction. So I'm calling, if the, if the object is moving in a clockwise manner, I'm calling that the positive T direction. And so now we can draw our free body diagrams that we, now that we have our axis drawn. And so I'm going to start by labeling the forces. There's only one force acting in this scenario and that's the force due, the gravitational force between Mars and the spaceship. That's pointing inwards in the positive R direction. So I'm just going to label that F sub G. And we know that that's equal to 8,885 newtons. 
So since there's no other forces acting, that's the only force that's acting to keep the spaceship in the circular motion, we're done with the free body diagram. So moving on to part B, we're asked to determine the speed of the spacecraft in orbit. We're given the extra bit of piece of information that we were missing. So recall that the gravitational force, Newton's universal law of gravitation, is equal to big G, which is just a constant, m1, m2, over the distance between them squared. And that distance is from the center of the circular path to the second object. And so in this case, it is from the center of Mars. So from the center of Mars all the way out to the spaceship. And so with what we labeled R in the case of the gravitational force is equal to R Mars plus D. And so that's what I have here for this first step is finding the basically the radius of the circular path. So from the center of Mars out to the spaceship. So adding those two numbers together, you find that the distance from the center of Mars to the spaceship is 4.3895 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now to find the speed, we want to take the sum of the forces in the centripetal or R direction and set that equal to the centripetal mass times the centripetal acceleration. We're drawing our forces and we're looking at our forces acting on the spaceship. So the mass in Newton's second law is the mass of the spaceship. So that's, a, that's right there. And so then you can solve for the velocity and plugging the numbers in now that we know the force and the radius you find a velocity of plus or minus 3,120 meters per second. We're not asked for velocity though, so we need to take the magnitude of the velocity to get the speed, and that's equal to 3,120 meters per second. The plus or the minus tells you the direction um, of the velocity, so either it's going clockwise if it's positive how we've drawn it, or if it's negative, it's going counterclockwise. But we we're only asked for speed, so we just take the magnitude and we're left with 3120. Now for C, we're asked to determine the mass of Mars. And so this is where we use the gravitational force that we just talked about. So we have all the information that we need for the grav to determine the mass of Mars. We just need to substitute in all of our numbers and we're left with the mass of Mars being the only unknown variable. And so doing that and solving, we find that the mass of Mars is equal to 6.41 times 10 to the 23rd kilograms. And so this does seem reasonable because the mass of Earth is approximately 5 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So it looks like we're in the, in the, the right ballpark. 